Greetings everyone. This is the first video in a series that we hope to make using software resources and machine intelligence that we were able to acquire thanks to your donations. In this case, we are bringing a very intelligent analysis on a topic that we ourselves have been dedicated to for a long time. Relating military capabilities to economic ones. The production is Persian, specifically from P3R TV. When the U.S. Israeli genocidal war against the Gaza Strip began, Israel thought it could wrap up this aggression within a short period of time. Over four months now, going into the fifth month, Israel has realized that was just a pipe dream. And it didn't anticipate the costs involved and how it's draining its purse. Just a couple of angles we'll be looking at in this edition of Economic Divide. Taking a look at some of the highlights of this program, Israel's economic crisis. We'll break it down. There's been a credit downgrade by Moody's, also the budget deficit, and uh, the GDP decrease, obviously all negative economic indicators for Israel. Then we will take a look at uh, a huge concern, and these are the mounting costs that are occurring for Israel. Uh, it has to subsidize salaries of 360,000 reservists who are also workers that contribute to the society. At this point, they're not because they're fighting an illegal um, genocide. Then you have the cost of aggression itself, $59.3 billion for the year, with the daily cost uh, to be between either $246 million or $272 million. Then the illegal settlement economy, confrontation with Hezbollah, a mistake, thousands of businesses closed in the north, and also $131 million agricultural loss. Just some of the angles we'll be looking at in terms of the losses from the settlements and the products there. More than four months have passed since Israel started its brutal genocide on the Gaza Strip. The onslaught has killed thousands of Palestinian people. The Israeli military has also suffered significant losses, but the economy of the regime has also been negatively impacted by the onslaught. It has rendered Israel's crisis city economy even more fragile. From a complete halt in tourism to global shipping challenges, there's not a single sector in the economy that has been sheltered from the shockwaves of the genocide. Since October, Israel has subsidized the salaries of reportedly 360,000 mobilized reservists who have been deployed to Gaza, many of whom are high-tech industry workers in finance, artificial intelligence, pharmaceuticals, and agriculture. In November, the Bank of Israel puts the onslaught's gross effects on Israel at $53 billion and pared back its estimates for economic growth to 2% per year from 2023 and 2024, down from 2.3% and 2.8%. In December, Israel's finance ministry said that the onslaught will likely cost Israel approximately $13.8 billion this year if its high-intensity phase concludes during the first quarter of 2024. These staggering costs, which could very easily rise, especially if another front develops with Hezbollah, leads to the question of how the regime will fund the onslaught's effort. The impact on Israel's high-tech sector, which is considered the engine of the regime's economy, is significant. According to economists, 10% of Israeli employees work in the high-tech sector, but they are responsible for 50% of the regime's exports. Na verdade, meios ocidentais estimam as perdas em mais de 20% do PIB. Time now to take a look at what's posted online. We begin with uh, a website uh, which uh, has stated that Moody has lowered its Israeli credit rating, downgrading its outlook from stable to negative. At the same time, uh, the agency has warned public finances are deteriorating and it has predicted materially higher debt burden amid the, well, they call it war, we call it an onslaught in Gaza, and it says to have lowered the outlook due to the risk of escalation with Hezbollah. Now, the Israeli Prime Minister has said the rating will go back up the moment we win this war. Next up, uh, taking a look at this post, the Gaza war has cost Israel more than $60 billion. So far, is anyone telling the cost to American taxpayers of the U.S. armed forces coming to Israel's rescue and fighting on its behalf throughout the region? It poses that as a question. Next, Palestinians fear Israel's economic chokehold will not end with or without a ceasefire. This post went on to say Israel is canceling work permits, restricting travel, withholding tax revenues, and West Bank Palestinians are saying that 
these are the types of problems that they're facing. And finally, Israel promising some relief to hemorrhaging West Bank economy in a covert meet with the PA officials. All right, those were some of the posts. Uh, I have to wait and see how uh, the economy of the West Bank as a whole can recover from this base of restrictions by Israel. Anyways, uh, let me uh, bring in our guest for our first Q&A. Uh, Arturo Hartman Pacheco joins us. He is a researcher in international relations uh, with a focus on Palestine and Israel. He's also a member of the International Center for Arab and Islamic Studies at the Federal University of Sergei. Uh, welcome to the program, Arturo Hartman Pacheco. Uh, let's uh, start out with uh, what has occurred over here uh, when it comes to the economic crisis that Israel is facing. I mean, we're looking at uh, so many different negative economic indicators. You have a decreasing GDP, you have costs that are accruing mainly uh, because of this uh, illegal U.S.-Israel genocidal war. Uh, the crisis also involves uh, mm, so many facets of the economy uh, that's hemorrhaging basically money. Uh, and th the question that comes about is how long can Israel sustain this and actually, how bad is this economic crisis that Israel is facing? Well, uh, when we talk about the, the question of the economy in Israel, so the point, I think the first thing we got to say is how is affecting uh, some uh, economic sectors, right? So what we what we heard and what we can see by, by the news that are coming and, and the reports that are being made, is that is affecting a lot in the so two sectors that we can take as examples, right? The technology sector and the agricultural sector. Uh, in in the case of the technology sector, there's a huge workforce that because the, the workers in the technology sector mainly are reservists in the Israeli army, so a lot of them are actually uh, in Gaza, in the operations of atta Israeli attacks over Gaza. So we have a shortage of workforce in the sector, which is that composed uh, around 18% of the Israeli economy. And the agricultural set, sector serves another problem, which is the lack of workforce. So mainly uh, the, the, the agricultural sector is composed, the workforce is composed of Palestinians, especially from the West Bank. But because of restrictions that Israel is imposing on Palestinians, you have a lack of workforce, so it's impacting the agricultural force. It's, it's, it's still early to actually uh, realize what kind of impact uh, in GDP you're going to have in Israel. But people are already talking about 2 3%, which is huge. All right, thank you for that. Let me bring in our next guest, uh, Mark Sloboda, uh, joins us. Uh, Mark Sloboda is a former senior lecturer uh, and researcher at the Faculty of Sociology of Moscow State University. Mark Sloboda, welcome to the program. Uh, the economic crisis that uh, Israel is facing is pretty severe uh, when you take a look at it. Um, but the one sector that has been affected the, probably the most is the technology sector. Uh, some of the recovery there. Yeah, um, so, I mean, these are the two big costs. The technology sector has been uh, the biggest sector of the Israeli economy, amounting for some 18 percent of the economy total. Uh, and if it a foreign investment, investment is down 50 percent. Uh, and then you compound that with the loss of of the uh, a huge portion of the labor force, large numbers of these ex-military people, these were working uh, in the tech sector. Uh, it is a fairly substantial uh, amount of damage. Um, uh, as long as this conflict continues and it shows no sign of abating anytime soon, it actually shows sign of expanding. Netanyahu uh, has been making uh, it increasingly belligerent uh, remarks about expanding the war himself uh, in uh, Israel, uh, moving its forces uh, north into uh, Lebanon uh, to go after Hezbollah, the U.S. Um, uh, expanding the conflict uh, to include the Ar Salah movement, the Houthis in Yemen as well. Uh, they're now talking about a protracted campaign there. Um, there's no chance of a recovery of the technology sector while the conflict continues uh, and the cost to it will continue to exponentially accrue over time. Even after the conflict ends, it may take years for the Israeli technology sector to recover from this. 